Okay, I want to continue this talk uh, about oscillation and frequency, and I thought I might be able to explain this a little bit differently in a context you guys uh, might be, is a little bit more relevant to what we've been talking about. So what I did is I put a, uh, a basic wave here. What kind of wave is this? I'll give you five seconds to think about it. Is it sine or cosine? cosine wave, right? Why is it a cosine wave? When we look on the y-axis, we see uh, it's maximum. It's at a maximum on the y-axis, okay? We know that by looking at a, a, a cosine wave, we go from maximum to intercept to minimum to intercept back to a maximum, okay? So we know that looking at this, that the period of this wave is four. Now, if this were a simple harmonic motion, question, and that's where we're at, so let's talk about it. The x-axis is time, right? So we would look at this and see one, two, three, four, these are seconds, okay, or minutes or hours or days, uh, but this, these are units of time. And this is a unit of displacement, right, or length probably. Uh, so we could say uh, inches, right? So what we have here is an object, if you want to consider it, okay, think about it like this. You're, you have an object, and let me let me do it. Uh, let's see. Okay, so it's maximum displacement. You're pulling that object, okay, and you're starting uh, by letting it go. And when you let that object go, it swings to equilibrium after one second, comes back to its other maximum displacement at two seconds, swings back to equilibrium at three, and then back to its max by four. So that's one period, right? When you talk about frequency and oscillation, so one oscillation, it takes four seconds, okay, to make one oscillation of this motion, okay? So one full, one full motion to its max displacement and back, right? Uh, what that means in terms of frequency, frequency takes these two numbers and relates them as a speed, if you want to think of it that way. Uh, so if you go back and you look at this, it's the number of oscillations per unit of time. Okay, so that means if it takes four seconds to do one oscillation, one oscillation for every four seconds, and then if we do this for every unit of time, we would get through one quarter of an oscillation in one second. Here's a different way to look at it graphically, okay? When you look at this wave, okay, how much movement have we seen out of this object after one second, right? This movement is exactly one fourth of the motion of the object, okay? And I tried to make this one as simple as possible. So the frequency is one quarter of an oscillation per second, right? If we're doing if it takes four seconds for the object to do one oscillation, we take this number and we divide it by the period is essentially what we're doing, right? So we're getting 0 0.25 or one fourth oscillation per second. I thought maybe you'd see that a little bit easier on the graph here, okay? Um, one more point before we end, and this is something that we've talked about uh, a few times in a lot of the problem, well, in the problems that we talked about uh, relating sine and cosine waves. I tried to keep using these words over and over again uh, because I knew we'd be talking about simple harmonic motion. If an object begins its motion from equilibrium, right? Equilibrium is a science -y term. It's a physics-y term, okay? That means it's starting its motion, right? Not displaced, right? If you, if you talk about a pendulum, you're talking about straight up and down, Okay. Uh, you're going to see some examples of springs, weighted springs, movements of those. Uh, equilibrium would be not pulled down and not retracted up, but right in the middle. Okay. And don't think about this in terms of forces. We'll leave that for the physics people. But any object that begins at equilibrium before it goes to its maximum displacement is obviously going to look like this. And we're going to be using a sine function for that. If an object begins its motion from maximum displacement, then we're obviously talking about a, a sine wave as we've seen before, right? And we see one of those here. Let me get my face out of the way, right? Beginning its motion at maximum displacement, and that's the swing. So instead of somebody starting like this, right? Straight, 
you know, sitting on the swing, not moving, you pull yourself back with your feet or someone pulls you back. That's where you start the motion and then you swing forward and then back. So starting at maximum displacement, obviously, would be oh, let me get my pencil right here, would be you, we'd be using a cosine weight for that. OK, now there's a couple more examples coming up after this. Please watch those examples again. I think this concept is actually pretty simple when you think about how much we've had to alter the graphs in the past. We don't have to alter these graphs as much. We're really only concerned with period and amplitude at this point. OK, so you'll watch those examples. And uh, if you have any questions on the homework or anything like that, click the Ask My Instructor button and I'll get back to you. All right. Peace.